Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I am here with my September Distashify Makes and Fabric Haul. Got some very exciting, fun and exciting things to share with you today. But before we get into that, um, today is Friday, which means we have a Love Notions Feature Friday pattern. And it's the Sybil skirt, folks. The Sybil Knit skirt is $5 today only. TKS 10 will get you an additional 10% off. You need to grab this pattern if you do not already have it in your pattern catalog. Number one, it's like seven different knit skirt styles. Um, it has a control panel that is an option for them. Um, I've made this a few times. It is an excellent, excellent knit skirt pattern. Um, everything can be made like midi, short, maxi. I mean, there's just so many different options. And if you grabbed last week's um, Feature Friday pattern, which was the tab at the top, all the, the tab at the top can be paired with the skirt of the Sybil as well as the Tessa sheath dress, um, the, uh, the, all the Tessa necklines can all be um, added to the Sybil skirt. And so you can mix and match and do a whole bunch of different knit dresses as well as separates in, you know, a dress or skirt and top. So um, it's a really, really good one and um, one of my favorite knit skirt patterns. So highly recommend it. And, um, and if you followed along with Tuesday's uh, Ponty video, this is a great one for Ponty. <laughs> It's absolutely a wonderful um, pattern uh, to be using with Ponty. So um, if you've been planning on doing some Ponty projects, you may want to grab this pattern at $5 today only. All right, let's get into uh, my makes for September when it comes to my Destashify fabrics. You've already seen one, so we'll talk about it briefly. And then I have a new make here for you guys. And then I've got one fabric to share with you all. Um, it's just a lot of it <laughs> uh, that I grabbed for September. Okay, so in August, I grabbed two fabrics and then one fabric bundle. Um, one of the fabrics was this shirting that's right here. This, um, it's probably hardly, I bet you can't even tell that this is a micro check. Um, but this is the Itch to Stitch Cantabria dress. It was released in September, the very beginning of September. So I've talked about this dress. And in fact, I'll even link up to the video um, up here if you want to go hear more of the details of it. It's such a fabulous pattern. Um, but this fabric is one that I grabbed and it is a micro check. It's in a red and chocolate brown and ivory uh, cotton shirting. And then I grabbed a bundle of some um, different shades of like chocolate brown and tan cotton lawns. And I used some of that to, I don't want to unbutton this whole thing. It takes forever. But some of that to line, this is dress is fully lined. So I used some of that um, cotton lawn to line the inside of my Cantabria. So those were the first two-ish fabrics that I grabbed. And then my third one is this white cotton with red flocked dots. So they're like little raised, almost velvety um, flocked dots that I made this uh, button up shirt out of. So we'll start with this. Those are the three fabrics um, that I, well, one was a bundle of fabrics, but you know, you get the picture. <laughs> We'll start with the Cantabria because I've already talked about this a little bit, but this is the Itch to Stitch Cantabria. Um, I made the size eight with a D cup, shortening it one inch at the waist. Um, there's a length and a shortened line there, as well as one inch at um, below the waist, like at the hip line. There's another length and shortened line there. So for a total of two inches, and those are the only alterations I made to this pattern. It's just, it's just fits me really well. I use, that's usually it. I can usually make a size eight with a D cap and then just shorten it. <laughs> and that's really all I need to do to itch to stitch patterns. It's just, they fit my body well, which is exciting and wonderful to have a pattern company that does, that I'm able to uh, say that about. Um, they're really well drafted too. Um, but like I mentioned, I use this cotton shirting for mine. Um, it's fully lined and I've talked ad nauseum about it in the video when this pattern was released. But if you have not grabbed this pattern, we're going into the cooler months here in the Northern Hemisphere, but this dress could be so easily um, layered with a, a something over it, um, as well as something underneath it, like a turtleneck I think would be really cool underneath this as well. Um, I had a lot of ideas for different ways you could dress this pattern up. I just think it's so classic with the double breasted and the notched collar. Um, it's just such a beautifully done pattern and I really, really love mine. So again, you've already seen this one, but this was make one of my Distashify fabrics. All right, this is my second one, folks. Okay, so this again is a um, white 
or kind of a creamy um, cotton shirting, I would say, with red flocked dots on it. And it may be kind of hard to see because they're a little pinpoint. Now, it's vintage. Both of these fabrics were vintage um, that I got off to Stashify. Now, this made a horrible mess in my dryer. <laughs> When I washed this and then dried it, I had red lint everywhere, but it's still flocked. Like I can still feel the texture. Um, this is probably the first time this fabric has been washed since it was manufactured. It still felt like it had that sizing in it. So um, that's not surprising that it did that um, off the get go. So I think we should be good going forward. I may wash it by itself the first couple of times just to be on the safe side. Although going forward, I washed and dried this fabric before making it into the shirt. But going forward, I'll wash it and let it air dry and then press it or steam it to get any um, crease, creases or wrinkles out of it. So, um, but I'll probably wash it by itself just for the first couple of times to make sure that um, it's not gonna shed anymore. But it's lovely fabric and I think it is so cute. So this pattern is the button-up shirt from the new Mimi G book, Make It Yours with Mimi G. Um, I was very excited to try out some of these patterns. I think her book is just really cool. Um, so she's got uh, five or six, maybe seven base patterns and then shows you how to do, um, I don't know, two or three hacks per pattern. Uh, at the end, she has like over a hundred looks that she's put together with these patterns and the different hacks and all that. It's, it's really cool. And I think she does a really good job of um, pairing the fabrics together and kind of making little capsules, um, different color stories and all that kind of thing. I found it to be very inspirational and really enjoy that book. So um, the first pattern in the book is the button up shirt. So um, I grabbed that. I made the size medium and that is the size that fits my upper bust measurement. So my upper bust is um, a 36 inches. So I was looking for, because I knew that they wouldn't, she didn't have cup sizes in this. So um, typical patterns are drafted with a B cup, which means a two inch difference from your upper bust to full bust. So a lot of times I will, if, they're not, if there aren't cup sizes, um, I'll pick a pattern with a 38 inch bust, full bust, because I know that most likely that was drafted for a 36 upper bust. And then I just do a full bust adjustment on it because my full bust is like 41 inches right now. So I need <laughs> quite a bit more room than what the 38 was gonna give me. Now this is a relaxed button up shirt. So there was some ease, but I did do a full bust adjustment and I added um, two inches. So one inch on each side to give me that room I needed. And it, it's fitting me really, really well. Um, I shortened the sleeves by half of an inch. Sometimes I, I'll shorten my sleeves a full inch and I just feel like they're just a little bit too short and I kind of like my cuffed sleeves to be a little, not long, I mean I don't want the cuff coming down way over my hand, but I do like there to be some ease when it's sitting at my wrist to there to be some um, ease there at the sleeve. So um, anyway, that I just shortened that a half of an inch because of that. Other than that, the only other thing I did, this is not the base pattern, this is one of the hacks, but the only other thing I did was I shortened the pattern one inch at the waist, so I brought the waist up an inch, which is just something I have to do with almost all patterns, so I kind of just do it before even trying, and that seemed to work really, really well. I probably should have made the button-up shirt as is. I mean, this worked out fine, <laughs> but do as I say, not as I do type things. I would make the base pattern first and get any fitting you need out and then do the hacks, but I was on a time crunch and so I didn't do that. Everything worked out fine. I think this is lovely, <laughs> but looking back, I, prob I, mean, I probably should have done that. This could not have fit and then I would have been out. It would have been harder to fit because I've hacked it and all that sort of thing. So it'd be easier to find the fit issues that needed to be addressed if I'd made the button up shirt just as is, but I like to live on the edge. So here we are. This is the MP, um, Empire um, Waist, what's it called? The Empire Ruffle Waist, Empire Waist Ruffle Hack, I think, um, which is like the second hack, I think, with the button up shirt. So basically what it is, is you raise, you cut the bodice at two inches above the waistline, and then you slash and spread the bottom part of the shirt to give yourself a lot of volume. Um, and then you gather that back onto the bodice. Um, the hack also has you making a short sleeve. I wanted to keep my sleeves long. Um, but the reason I wanted to try this out is that peplums are very in for this fall. And while this isn't technically a peplum, it is, gives that feel of a peplum. So um, I'm excited to wear it, um, which you're seeing it as I'm talking, over the wide leg jeans, um, just to kind of balance out the what width at the hip with width at my ankle. It keeps my figure in proportion and keeps it balanced. Um, I think that if you are a pear shape or a hourglass shape, 
I think this paired with skinny jeans or a skinnier pant would be, or even straight leg would be very attractive. I just can look top heavy very easily because I'm bigger on top than I am on bottom. So having things that help balance that on my figure work best. Um, so like a wider leg pant I would wear with this. Um, flares like what I've got on um, all work really, really well for me to keep that balanced. But I love a good peplum because I'm very straight through my hips. So adding a little width there is also good for balancing out my figure. Um, and I've been very excited that the peplums have been poking their head around here um, in the fall so that I can try that out. Um, anyway, I love my new top. <laughs> and it goes perfectly into my fall wardrobe. This is a warm red dot. Um, so the red and cream just slide seamlessly, as does this. These both slide seamlessly into my fall um, sewing or fall capsule wardrobe. So I will be wearing both of these and possibly into the winter. We'll see how long I can get this into the winter because it is a thin dress. Um, but with layering, I might be able to take this through to like December. Um, I'll probably have to stop at that point just because I'll want either have to wear a lot of layers under and over or, you know, it just may be more trouble than it's worth. Um, but this is a good one, as is this. So those are the two things that I made this month with my Distashify fabric. Let me move the ladies and I will show you what fabric I grabbed and my plans for that. All right, so this month I only grabbed one fabric because it, I mean, was expensive because there's a lot of it that's here. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit, not that sewing is selfish. Sewing for yourself is never selfish. I actually kind of hate that term. It is our hobby, like most people do their hobbies for themselves. That's the whole point of the hobby. Um, and just because we're making ourselves clothes with our creative outlet does not mean that it's selfish. I actually really hate that term, but I have a very full closet. <laughs> and I just went through and did a big purge of things. Um, and I just need, I, I don't need to be making myself multiple garments. That saying, I just, you know, made myself two things. Uh, but I don't need to be making myself a ton of things because the whole goal was for me to get to my handmade wardrobe. And I would say 95% of my wardrobe is handmade at this point. Um, so now it's just replacing things and, you know, things wear out. Or if I want to add in some new things, um, I mean, sometimes I just add things in because I just really like that fabric and want to be wearing it. And that's fine too. No one tells an artist that they're wasting canvas. So... <laughs> when they're making their paintings. So um, I'm all about, you know, giving it and, and that's my creative outlet. It's my mental health, um, all sorts of things. But that being said, I have been trying to do a little bit more sewing for my loved ones. And when I saw this fabric, this is a, I think it's Lyocell. It's a Lyocell 12, which Lyocell is a brand name for like a viscose or a rayon. Um, Lyocell uses recycled chemicals for um, their, uh, for the production of turning whatever it is, wood cellulose or whatever, into fabric. Um, there's a chemical process that has to happen there in order to turn it into fiber. Um, but they use recycled chemicals, so it's much better on the environment. But um, there is like, I think, over five yards of this fabric. I have so much, but it is gorgeous. So it's a Lyocell 12. It's a beautiful bottom weight. Um, it's in red. And technically, I could probably get away with this. But there's two things. Number one, it's muted. And number two, which I'm a clear, my color palette's very clear. And um, number two, this is a much cooler red. So I felt like that was like two strikes against it. Had it been this shade of red, but not quite as muted, I probably would have been fine. So like a clearer brick red, or if it had been muted, but more of a um, warmer red, I think I would have been able to get away with it that way as well. And I knew, I could tell by the pictures that this was probably going to be cooler, too cool for me. But I just couldn't resist. It was such a beautiful fabric. Anyway, um, brought it, got it home, and lo and behold, it is, it's a red that Jenny can wear. Um, it's her... Her red's really more of like a dark pink, like a fuchsia, like a rose, raspberry kind of color. Um, I mean, she's got a whole bunch of pinks on her color card. She's a moonlit summer. But this one, we could tell, slid into there. And I think this would be beautiful paired with gray, paired with um, uh, pale pink. Um, a lot of her colors, I think, would be really uh, pale purple. I think a lot of the, her colors would be very beautiful with this. And she just recently bought a pair of um, overalls on um, Amazon and is in love with them. Like, this is a really loose-fitting, hardly-touches-your-body type overalls. 
So we have decided, um, at first we were going to do overalls with this, and then we were looking at Seamwork Patterns, um, and I've recently become an affiliate with, with Seamwork Patterns, which is exciting, which means I make a small commission off any pat any um, purchases that are made off my link by Seamwork pays me a small commission. Um, but we were looking through those, and she saw the sky jumpsuit, and she was like, oh, I've changed my mind. I want a jumpsuit for the fall. Um, number one, there's a jumpsuit in the fall capsule wardrobe that she really wanted to kind of recreate. And uh, number two, Jenny is very long in the torso. She was, she's not able to buy jumpsuits off the rack. They're always, you know, cut her in half vertically because <laughs> she needs extra room through her torso in order for things to fit. So one pieces, um, especially when there's a crotch seam involved, are, are trying for ready to wear for her. So we're gonna be using this beautiful Lyocell 12 to make her a sky jumpsuit from seam work patterns. Very excited about that. Now, there is gonna be plenty of this left over. Um, I think my plan is, I've kind of been doing this a little bit more with my Distachify fabrics, because my fabric stash is out of, the, is out of control as well. <laughs> Um, but a lot of times with the Distachify fabrics, I don't need as much as what I'm buying, but you can only buy, you know, the piece that's uh, available. So I have been putting my offcuts aside, which are sizable enough to make a, another garment. And um, the, in December, I'm going to open my Distachify store back up when my um, intern is out of school again for a few weeks. Um, and she's going to set that up and um, sell some of this stuff. So there's a very good chance that this shows up on the Distachify, the excess of this shows up on the Distachify site. So keep your eyes peeled. That could definitely um, be popping back up. Um, you know, obviously I'll make the jumps. Again, I think there's over five yards of this or right at five yards. And I do not need anywhere close to that for that jumpsuit for her. So there will be some excess, but it's a beautiful fabric. It is just, it's buttery soft. The drape, I mean, even with five yards, the drape of that is beautiful. So there you have it. That is going to be my plans for September for my Distachify fab, or October, excuse me. Um, I'll be making this up in October. This is my September fabric haul that I'll be making these up in October. So there you have it, guys. That's what I've been up to with Distachify this month. As a reminder, um, I have opened up ticket sales for the um, my meet and greet that's at the end of October. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link down below. Um, I'm filming this before ticket sales have opened up, so... Um, that's assuming that tickets haven't <laughs> sold out, um, but they are uh, limited spots. So you may want to go over there. I'll put the link there um, and hopefully there are still some spots left. So uh, head on over there if you're interested in that. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I have some really fun content for next week. I can't talk more about it right now, but um, I've got a really fun week of content planned for next week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the fun. Okay, guys, have a wonderful Friday. Get some sewing in this weekend, and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye!